Hey guys, it's Joe, back with another episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. In this video, I'll focus on texture baking. The baker is one of my favorite new additions for Toolbag, so let's bake some maps. First off, click the bread icon above the outliner to get started. That'll add a baker object to your scene. By default, the baker object has a bake group and a high and low poly slot. You can load your meshes into the appropriate slots by hand, or you can save some time and use the quick loader. The quick loader analyzes your file and then automatically assigns your high and low poly meshes to bake groups based on naming conventions. Bake groups define pairs of high and low poly objects, which can be isolated from other pairs. You can get clean bakes free of intersection errors without having to set up an exploded bake. So here's my primary group and my secondary group. By separating these into two groups, I can make sure that there won't be any errors where the meshes intersect. Now, I'll hide everything but my low poly and then apply a preview material so that we can see updates in real time. I'll make the preview material a little glossier and more reflective so it's easy to see what's happening. I've got errors on this top part, so let's show the high poly and then go to the low poly object and adjust our offset distance. Make sure that the cage fully encompasses the high so that no details are left out. That looks better, but I'm still missing a small chunk of that screw. I can open the bake offset editor and then paint directly on my mesh to extend the cage. This works very similar to a sculpting app. If I hold down control, I can paint in the opposite direction as well. I've got some problems with skew detail here, so let's open the skew map painter. This uses the same controls as the offset painter, except that it allows you to massage the projection direction so that you can clean up skew details like this. There, that looks a lot better. I've got a few more areas that I'd like to clean up as well, so I'll do that quickly before moving on. Now that we've got our setup complete, let's enable a few more outputs and then apply the preview material again. I set up materials for the various surfaces of the high poly mesh beforehand, so now we have a low poly that looks more or less like our high poly, including the base materials. Here's a handy tip. If you click the little ball icon, you'll get a preview of your map in the viewport. The Baker object has additional settings for various outputs. Let's take a look at ambient occlusion maps. I'll enable the AO output, bake, and then hit the preview map button to see the result in the viewport. This looks pretty good, but there's some additional settings we can tweak to change the style of the AO. The floor occlusion setting casts directional occlusion from the ground plane, while ignore groups makes sure that occlusion is cast between different bake groups. When both are enabled, it really ties the room together. There's some banding artifacts that I'd like to improve here. I can do that by upping the rate count setting. This will result in longer bake times, but smoother bakes. I'm pretty happy with that now. So let's take a look at another cool feature. When we enable the multi-layer PSD setting, a PSD file will be saved with all of our outputs. Let's jump over to Photoshop and see what that looks like. Here you'll see that each map type is saved as a layer in the PSC file. What's even cooler is that all of your material properties, like albedo, specular, and gloss, are baked down from the high poly, and each material has a unique layer with a mask automatically set up. That covers the basics of the baking system. Stay tuned for more episodes of Getting to Know Toolbag 3, and as always, check out our website for more information, tutorials, and other cool stuff.